Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to be sharing with you a massive book haul. I went to the library last night, got some books, so we'll go over those, but I also saw they had a library book sale and for $9.75 I was able to get these books. So I have a box. Okay, so the first thing I saw at my library book sale that I was really excited about were two books from the Tea Shop Mystery series by Laura Child. I've talked about these a couple of times in my new cozy mystery releases videos if you like new cozy mysteries I do a video every month I'll link the playlist above but I've never actually read these and I've been meaning to read them for such a long time because I love tea I absolutely adore tea so I'm just really excited for this I think the first one this is death by Darjeeling and our main character in this is Theodosa she owns a tea shop gets into murder mystery mischief cozy like classic cozy mysteries I've heard these are really good it's a really ongoing series I think there's like 20 some books in the series and how pretty are the covers I mean just so pretty and I love I'm like yes absolutely so beautiful so I picked those up for a stellar like a, a steal an absolute steal I'm so excited okay the next book I got from the, the library sale is actually a thriller they didn't have too many thrillers that were like my kind of taste but this one I remember seeing and I thought it was interesting it's called The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn and basically we have our main character, Anna, and she's a recluse in New York City. She spends her days like in her apartment looking through the windows, thus the name, and this family moves in across the street, and so she's watching them, and something happens, of course, and that's kind of our premise, but I am excited for the premise of this. I love the spine. I mean, just so beautiful, and for a dollar for a hardcover, I was like, well, Come on. This one is a series that I've had some of you recommend to me, so I'm really excited. It's actually the first book in the series, too. I managed to nab it. It's called Murder Past Due by Miranda James. This is the Cat in the Stacks mystery book, and I have talked about this again in some of my new release videos, but I've never gotten to actually read the series. So this one actually has a male protagonist, which is super rare for like modern day cozy, so I'm really excited about that. Charlie is our main character and he has his cat, of course, and in this one, the first in the series, I think he's like a bookshop owner, but basically one of his like alumni, people from like the same school he went to, is coming back to town. His name is Godfrey and he is now like a famous author, but he's also a big snob, like no one really likes him. Charlie doesn't like him, the town doesn't like him, and unfortunately at this like celebratory like alumni dinner for him, they basically a man ends up in the hospital because of Godfrey and then later that day Godfrey's dead and Charlie gets involved in the case so I'm very excited for this how cute is this cat I mean come on it also takes place in Athena Mississippi I love a good like southern charm so I'm really excited for this I've had so many of you say good things about this. So I'm unbelievably excited. It's gonna be great. I can just feel it in my bones. A book that I checked out from the library is a brand new cozy release. I'm so excited for it. It's called I Heard a Fly Buzz When I Died by Amanda Flower. This is part of the historical Emily Dickinson cozy mystery series. I read the first book last year and I gave it 3.5 stars. I just remember the writing and pacing being like a little off but I really fell in love with the characters and the story and just the setting, so I'm really excited to read book two. So this takes place in August 1856. Our main character is actually Willa, who is Emily Dickinson's, like, housemate, but they're kind of friends. They really formed a relationship in book one, and in this one, they actually have um, Emerson, who's coming to stay with the Dickinson household. They're very excited, but his secretary, Luther, really takes an interest in the Dickinson sisters, and at first, Emily is flattered, but then she becomes kind of concerned because she thinks he might actually be trying to like woo them to kind of move up in society basically and she's concerned because one of her sisters is kind of reciprocating that like attraction or the feelings that are there but before she can do anything about it the secretary ends up dead and Emerson demands that answers be found so I'm really excited for this I think it's gonna be great oh I did also get my book of the month recently and that is no one can know by Kate Alice Marshall so this is her second adult thriller. I read What Lies in the Woods a couple months ago and I really liked it. It was very intense, very dark, but very good. And she seems to have kind of a trend because in that book there's like three main characters, three females who are like best friends, but in this one there's three sisters you're kind of following. So in this one you're following, you're kind of, you do bounce around perspectives, but you're primarily following Emma 
who was the middle sister. And basically when she was a teenager, her and her three sisters were at home one night and her and her sisters like covered up some evidence the night that her parents were murdered in their home. Well, after all these years, Emma is coming back with her husband, Nathan, to her parents' home. No one's lived there since. And her sisters and her are completely estranged. And this is bringing her and her sisters back together because they're looking at selling the house and the things start to happen. And she's starting to really question what happened that night. And she wants to figure out what actually happened to her parents. So I'm really excited. I love the cover and this effect with like the glass on it. I think that looks super cool. I love a thriller cover with like an iconic like location on it. I think that's so cool. So I'm really excited to read this. I think it's going to be it's gonna be fun. This next one I have never heard of. I'm not even sure if it's a cozy mystery but it is a mystery and it's gonna help me with my reading around the world kind of quest and this one takes place in India. It's called The Case of the Missing Servant by Tarkin Hall. It says meet Vishpuri, India's most private investigator. So he's supposed to be a very like old-fashioned sleuth. He's really confidential and he's basically hired to find this missing girl named Mary. I'm really excited. I've never read a cozy mystery or just a Again, I'm going to find out. I will put on screen if it's a cozy or just a normal mystery, but I'm really excited to read this. The colors on this cover are just unbelievably pretty, and it really caught my eye, and I was like, this is perfect. This is going to add to, you know, what I've read from Asia, so I'm really excited to read some more mysteries that are set in different locations than what I normally read. So another kind of thriller I want to read is called The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. I've read some of her other works, really enjoyed them. This one involves um, Sylvie as kind of our main character and her sister Persephone 16 years ago she went out I think as like a teenager I'm guessing and she went out with this boy her boyfriend who she wasn't supposed to be seeing and she never returned home. Three days later her body was found the murder has never been solved. Well fast forward to the future Sylvie is going back home to see her mother and they used to have a really good relationship but things got really tense after her sister's murder of course yeah, as you would imagine so the, the things have been really awkward but her sis her mom is going through these cancer treatments so she wants to be there for her well she's really uncomfortable because she finds out that Ben who was her sister's boyfriend at the time is actually a nurse at the hospital where her mom's getting treatment and she's always secretly suspected that he had something to do with her sister's murder. She also has some of her own guilt about things that happened around that night or maybe led to her sister wandering off or something like that. So I'm really excited for this. I love a good like cold case, I don't know, like solving like the past kind of thriller. So I'm really excited for this and I think the sister, I like reading about sisters and women in thrillers so I think this is going to be really good. I like, I really like the cover on here. And yeah, I'm excited for this. It seemed like a really good one for this time of year. I did find an Agatha Christie called By the Pricking of My Thumb. I actually have not heard of this one. I know absolutely nothing about this, but I'm going to leave it like that. I just know I don't think it's an Hercule Poirot or Miss Marple. I think it's one of her other mysteries. So I'm really excited for it. Don't know anything else about it. The cover is definitely a little... It's a little... It's a, it's a bit... It's definitely a bit worn. But I'm excited to give this a try, see what it's like. I also picked up Wicked by Gregory McGuire. I actually have seen this play and I really enjoy it, so I thought this would be a really interesting book to read. It's really thick, it's like six, it's almost 600 pages. But this is basically about the Wicked Witch of the West and her story instead of The Wizard of Oz. Like her, It's like a prequel basically to The Wizard of Oz and her story leading up to her becoming the Wicked Witch and being in the Wizard of Oz. So I'm really excited for this. I really loved the play. It was just the music. Oh my goodness. It was just stunning. So I love that and we got some like green edges which is really fun. So I can't wait to try this one out. Oh another one for reading around the world. I found one for Africa. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's Elizabeth Peters the Hippopotamus Pool and this one does take place in Africa. Um, it does have Amelia Peabody and her irascible archaeologist husband and they are going through this tomb in Egypt and unfortunately their guide ends up disappearing as they uncover this tomb so they take their teenage son and they're trying to follow the trail down the river and I'm really excited I think this is going to be very interesting I would love to read 
a cozy mystery set in Africa that's actually from someone who's like native to the area so if you have a recommendation let me know but I'm at least excited to be exploring a new part of the world again with my reading. Okay so this book I did actually end up ordering on Amazon it was just one standalone so I thought I'd throw it in and this is Getaway with Murder by Diane Kelly. Again you guys have been saying this is so good and I've been really wanting to read this book. Um, it's called The Mountain Lodge Mysteries. This is book one in the series and Misty Murphy basically just had like an amicable divorce and she takes her settlement and like money from the divorce and buys a very, you know, kind of, it needs some work kind of mountain lodge. So she's putting in the effort to build it. She meets this nice handyman. There might be a bit of a romance there it looks like. And her first guest at the mountain lodge is this yoga retreat someone ends up dying and Misty needs to clear the lodge's name basically before her business is ruined. So I'm really excited for this. I love the mountain setting. How cute is that cat? So beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous cat. I could not have an animal with that long of hair. I think it would drive me crazy like housekeeping wise but they're so beautiful. This next one I've been wanting to read for a long time. It's called Mingo, Mambo, and Murder by Raquel V. Reyes. Again I've talked about this in my mystery releases but never actually gotten around to the series. So our main character in this is Miriam and she's basically making a big life switch. She's moving from New York to Miami. She wants to focus more on her son maybe reinvent herself with her career and her husband's also starting a friendship with an ex which she's not thrilled about but thanks to her friend Alma she gets a job working at this like Spanish English uh, like cooking Car Caribbean like cooking TV channel things are going okay until the star of the show has like this luncheon or something and one of the guests dies very dramatic I love the titles for the series though they're all very like alliterative and I really enjoy the time. They're just fun. And I love the colors. I'm really excited. It looks like there is an adorable cat, so this is going to be a good time, I think. Another one I found at the book sale was The Readaholics and the Falcon Fiasco, a book club mystery by Laura D. Silverio. This is the first in a new series. I haven't actually heard of this one, um, but it says the Readaholics like doing whodunit mysteries like the Maltese Falcon. I guess that's where the title's from. So our main character in this is Amy Faye. This takes place in Colorado. She has an event planning business, which is a theme I really like. She's got the Readaholics book club. Things are going pretty well until she agrees to, uh, like, Kate, like, not cater. She agrees to plan this wedding, not realizing that the groom is her ex, which is awkward. <laughs> Very awkward. Um, and then on top of that, one of her Readaholic book club members, Ivy, ends up dying by poisoning. Now the police think it's actually like an intentional poisoning, but Amy Faye and the other book club members don't think so, so, this, so they start to get involved in the case basically. Again, so excited for this. I love the little cat on here. Beautiful coziness. I think this is again a great one for winter. I don't know what time of year this takes place, but just the mountain setting with Colorado I think is going to be really fun and so, so cute. So cute. If you've read this, let me know. I haven't actually heard of this one. Next we have An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. I recently read one by her and I really, really liked it. I think, what was it called? It was like, Everyone Here is Lying. Oh, I'm so excited for this. This is actually a closed setting. Perfect. It takes place in the Catskills. Mitchell has an inn and it's a really great place for a getaway, even a romantic getaway. And him and his guests are snowed in and one of the guests ends up murdered. And then they start to die one by one. This is gonna be good. I just. Oh. And this cover, I mean, it's so spooky, like so gripping. There's something about the snow and like winter thrillers that I love above all else. It's just such a good setting. It's hard to beat it, you know? One I'm planning on reading for a Christmas reading vlog is Miss Jeffries and the Three Wise Women by Emily Brightwell. I've had a lot of you also recommend this one. It's recommended for people who like Downton Abbey. It's described as the Miss Marple of Victorian mystery. So essentially this man named Christopher is shot dead at this party and when the murder hasn't been solved six weeks later this inspector is called in. Well he has a secret weapon who is Miss Jeffries who was like his housekeeper and he doesn't underestimate her though. He knows she's got the eye for it. She's like Miss Marple and she's on it. And there's three, it looks like three um, women, an American heiress, charming next door neighbor and the formidable cook who are all using their persuasive powers to get others on board because people aren't really they just kind of think it was like a robbery gone wrong they're not taking it as seriously as they should be because this man was murdered he deserves justice so this is like a Christmassy one I'm assuming this is Miss Jeffries on the cover and then the inspector so I'm really excited I've had a couple of you say this is really good and 
yeah. It's a really long running series. This is like book 20 or something in the series. There's like so many books in this series, it's overwhelming. But I loved the Christmas cover for this, so I thought it'd be a really fun time. Okay, this next one I found at the book sale and I couldn't resist. I mean, look at this cover for starters. How gorgeous. So it's called An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helen Turston. And this is like a bunch of short stories about this 88 year old woman named Maud. And she apparently isn't above murder. So that's a bit of a twist right there. And basically she's not above murder. Her father died leaving her with this like nice place that she kind of got with like a clause on a contract. And she realized that things, good things can come from tragedies, I guess, that kind of led her to that belief. Now that she's in her late 80s, she's got no family, no friends, and she's fine with that. She likes her solitude. So it sounds like if people cross her, she might be she might be a bit murderous. And in this one, it also sounds like there might be something that actually catches up with her. So I'm gonna see, but these are little short stories. I looked at them last night when I bought these and it looked like there was like about 30 pages or so on average per short story, so really cute. This cover is so cute with like the crochet looking like needlework. How, how beautiful is the needlework look? Like, I love the look of that. Another one I kind of just grabbed on a whim is called Buried Stuff, a Jane Wheel Mystery by Sharon Pfeiffer. And this is the world's largest garage sale. Murder included. So it sounds like Jane Wheel is an antique shopper, like picker. She like purchases things, probably resells them. There's gonna be like this town-wide garage sale in this town in Illinois. And she's super excited, so she heads back, but there's like these old bones that are discovered on a farmer's like field nearby. So there's like some kind of murder or death that she gets involved with, but she's also trying to hunt around, find the best deals, get buried and stuff. So I'm excited. I haven't again, this is one I have no, I don't think I've ever heard of it. I don't know anything about it. Let me know if you've read it, but it just sounded like a good time. It sounded fun. I love the green. It really caught my eye. This is one I had meant to read last year for my winter TBR and I didn't get to it, but this year we're getting to it. And that's Bellwether Rhapsody, a novel by Kate Radicula, and I'm very excited. So essentially, the, there's like this beautiful like hotel as you can kind of see on the cover. And in 1982, there was this actress that died there very famously. And it's kind of been haunted since then. But flash forward to the future, which in this setting is 1997. And our main character, Alice, who is a high school drama queen, checks into that very same room where the actress was murdered. No, I'm sorry. It's a new bride who murdered her husband and then murdered herself. So Alice checks into that room. And shortly after, she finds her roommate like hung herself possibly. And things start to get spooky. I don't know if this is like a thriller or a mystery. It seems pretty intense. It, does, it doesn't sound like a cozy mystery to me. A high school music festival goes awry when a young prodigy disappears from the most infamous room in the Bellwether Hotel in a whip-smart novel sparkling with dark and giddy humor. It's, it's called a genre-bending page-turner that has like nods to pop culture like The Shining, but also Agatha Christie. So I'm kind of, I'm really interested because I love pretty much murder mysteries across the board and I also love thrillers so it kind of sounds like this could be crossing a few different genres. I'm very excited to see what this is all about and it's a really cute cover. It really stands out. I like it. And then last but not least, I don't know how many of you will be interested in this, it's nonfiction, but I picked up The Sleep Prescription by Eric A. Prather, PhD. It's called Seven Days to Unlocking Your Best Rest. I'm somebody who definitely struggles with insomnia from time to time like I know a lot of people do, and apparently this is supposed to be a really good guide to really improving your sleep. Um, and especially if you've tried other things, like the book kind of starts out talking about how like, you know, if you're reading this, you've probably tried like some basic sleep hygiene stuff, like making sure you're sleeping in a dark room, like that sort of thing. But this book will really kind of dive into some other things. I guess this doctor has worked in like insomnia, like sleep clinics. So that's kind of his background. I thought, why not? Like, if this book could help me with better sleep, I will take it. So I'm excited to read this and just hopefully reap some benefits from it. But that is everything, guys. I can't... <laughs> This, this stack of books next to me, it feels massive. I'm so incredibly grateful that I stumbled on that book sale and got like almost all of these for 
less than $10 minus the book of the month book for my subscription and the one random cozy I had ordered. But otherwise, I'm like, thank you, libraries. Let me know down below if you've read any of these series, if there's one you want me to start reading that you're most excited about, or about some of the more like obscure series that, that I haven't heard of at least. Let me know if you've read them, what you recommend. I'm super excited. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do have some fun reading vlogs coming up, and I can't wait to share them with you. I will have some of these books I know featured in those, so definitely hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!